police say five fetuses found in a D.C. home where anti-abortion activists is believed to live. That's, that's just fantastic. Police say they found five fetuses in a home in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, days after the indictment of several anti-abortion activists, including a woman believed to live in the home where the fetuses were discovered, on charges of blocking access to a reproductive health clinic in 2020. Officers were called to the home in the Capitol Hill area to investigate a tip regarding potential biohazard material, the Metro Police Department said in a statement. When they entered the home, they discovered five fetuses, police said. D.C. police have not announced any arrests in connection with the fetuses, but said the investigation is ongoing. Separately, Handy and eight other anti-abortion activists were indicted last week by a federal grand jury for allegedly blocking access in 2020 to a D.C. clinic that provides abortion services. Handy and the other defendants conspired with each other to obstruct the clinic on October 22, 2020, and to threaten or intimidate patients and employees of the clinic, according to the indictment. The defendants traveled to D.C. from other states and used deception and force to gain access to the clinic, according to the indictment. The conspirators brought tools to barricade themselves inside the clinic, including ropes and chains. Days before the incident, prosecutors allege Handy called the clinic and falsely represented herself as a female named Hazel Jenkins who needed reproductive health services and made an appointment for 9 a.m. When the clinic opened, the defendants forcefully pushed through the clinic door into the clinic's waiting room, according to the indictment. The forceful entry allegedly caused a nurse to stumble and sprain her ankle. Ugh. And you can keep on reading this loveliness at CNN.com. I'm sure that after seeing that intro for this video, a lot of you have realized that this is going to come with an enormous trigger warning. There is absolutely no possible way for me to discuss this subject without bringing up things that I know are going to trigger people. So if you're bothered by things like evangelicalism, pro-life or pro-choice, anything like that and under that umbrella this is definitely not going to be the video for you you are going to get distressed i can just about guarantee it i wanted to speak on this issue because i believe that i have kind of a special perspective on this i'm not only a pagan who grew up in a catholic household but I was also in a Catholic household that attended the Right to Life March in Washington, D.C. And I haven't seen very many people who have actually been to the Right to Life March speaking on this on TikTok or YouTube or anywhere yet. Basically, I'm not even a little bit shocked by the fact that she did something like this because the number one way that pro-lifers try to keep you from having an abortion or even going into places like Planned Parenthood for any, literally any other reason, any reason at all, is through fear mongering. They have mastered the art of making you absolutely terrified or just disgusted in a very visceral way. They have perfected it at this point. They know full well that whether you are at a place like Planned Parenthood for an abortion or not, chances are if you have reached a point in your life where your only resource available to you is a place like Planned Parenthood that is either very cheap or very free, that you're in kind of a downward spiral. You're having a hard time so you're probably not in your very best mental state. And they completely prey on this. They are hoping that if you are someone who is on the fence, or even if you are way far left, and you are harassed and bullied and frightened enough that you will just run away. They're not necessarily expecting you to completely convert. They know that they don't have that kind of power in that setting, but they're hoping that they can get you to run away and never come back. And that way they can say, we won. And I'm sure that by now a lot of you have seen a lot of people on my side of this issue, in case you hadn't noticed yet, I'm very, very pro-choice, saying, that the thing that frustrates us most about people like this is that they do everything in their power to keep you from having an abortion, but then they do absolutely nothing and give you absolutely no resources to help you keep that child safe, happy, and healthy. So you have someone that, let's say, was going there for an abortion because they're in absolute poverty and there's no way they can even afford formula and diapers. 
So they terrify them into not getting that abortion that day. They take that as a win, but then they don't help this person and they end up needing to either give up the child anyway because they can't afford to take care of it, or they end up raising a child in poverty and the child has a horrible life. Listen, please, if you ever get a chance on especially TikTok to people who were children of someone who wanted an abortion, who was unable to get one, listen to what they have to say because nine out of 10 of them say they wish they'd been aborted. Now, rounding back to this specific issue, this news story, the number one thing I keep seeing people say is just why. Whether they're far right or far left, they're all just saying why. The far right is saying, I don't understand how she could betray us like this. Why would she have something like this when, you know, it, she was supposed to be one of our own. She's very extreme. So I imagine a lot of people who are alt-right Christians are horrified by this and can't understand it. I'm sure some of them are going to already be building conspiracies on someone must have just put her up to this. Someone must have planted it there, even though she's already admitted to it by saying something, um, paraphrasing here along the lines of they're going to be shocked when they see what's in there. So she was fully aware that she had done this. The left is also very upset because although none of us are shocked by the fact that she's done something like this, we still find it disgusting and horrifying that is not safe for her. It's not safe for the people who live in close proximity to her. And the other reason a lot of us are upset is because we know full well what she was doing with those fetuses. For anyone who has never been to the Right to Life March in DC, this is basically what goes down there. When you're marching down the street, there are people who literally have billboard sized signs that they have created themselves. Sometimes they're digital, sometimes they're just printed out and they follow you around with them, whether you're on their side or not, just to terrorize you with them. And on these giant signs are photographs, real photographs, not CGI images, real photographs of aborted fetuses in various stages. And it's completely disgusting. They make it as graphic and horrific as they possibly can because they're trying to scare you. They're doing everything in their power to try to convince you that this was a living human baby that somebody murdered. They're, they're trying to freak you out. That's their main goal, to freak you out so that, again, you're pushed away from ever wanting to do that. So I am positive that she had these things in her house because she was either in the process of photographing them for that or she was hoping to. And honestly, just based on this specific individual and what she's been accused of in the past, going as far as to like, you know, busting into these resource centers and clinics and harassing people and bullying people and putting her hands on people just to get what she wants, I would honestly, not be shocked. Now, this is, this is my opinion. Understand this is my opinion. There's nothing proving anything like this yet, but just based on her personality type and what she's done in the past, I would not be shocked if she was not only trying to take photographs of the fetuses, but that she would also go as far as to do something like try to show someone them like in real life to bring them into a clinic in her hand and say look this is what you're doing this is what you've done you've killed this innocent baby you're murderers or something i'm just saying i wouldn't be shocked if it turned out that was her main motivation doing something like that just given her history so it's horrible there haven't really been many updates yet. I'll try to update you guys if I get more information. But as of right now, they've obviously been taken out of her home and they're still working on what is even going on. And I'm probably going to have comments off on this video because it is a very, very divisive issue. And even though I don't generally shy away from controversy, it can cause a real big problem in some cases if people get too riled up about this and honestly there is every reason to be upset about this from either direction but just understand if you are someone who is Christian and who is pro-life and very anti-pro-choice and you are totally okay with things like the right to life march and people protesting outside of Planned Parenthood and other clinics 
that offer abortions, if you are one of these people, understand this is not an isolated incident. This is not a one-time only thing. This is not just this specific individual. And this is what a majority of us see when we see you going down the street and harassing us. Stop being the monster you're promising to save children from and actually do something to help for a change instead of yelling at innocent people. That's all I've got to say on the matter for right now. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. This was absolutely not a planned video. I just needed to put my two cents in about it. I have a full scripted video coming soon. Bye-bye.